Hi everyone, I'm Jackie Blight. I'm one of the 10 artists selected for the Sunbury Cultural Commissions project. I chose the Evan Street Wildflower Grasslands as my subject and for the opening exhibition at the Hume Global Learning Centre in Sunbury, I created the artwork Illuminating the Grasslands. It was serendipity that I chose this subject. I started sifting through photos from the George Evans Museum collection and came across an image of the grasslands from the 90s. I felt a pang of guilt. I'd lived in Sunbury for over 40 years and never once set foot in them. So I immediately rushed out to remedy that by taking a long walk in the grass. It's not easy to love the grasslands. From a distance, it just looks like any other paddock. To really appreciate it requires a change of mindset. If you imagine that you're a small creature like a bandicoot and the grass is as tall as trees, then the grasslands become a wonderful forest with all its beauty and complexity revealed. As I began to understand this, I became fascinated by the stories of the tiny plants and creatures. Fast forward one year, my passion for the grasslands has grown. I have visited them dozens of times, photographing the plants, speaking to the experts from council and the community, learning to identify and remove weeds, watching the cultural burning practices and witnessing the resulting reinvigoration of the forbs and grasses. Each time I visit, I discover something new. I've now seen the four seasons and the life cycle of hundreds of plants, from first leaves to floating seeds. For stage two, I'm continuing with the grassland theme. The Evan Street grassland is an amazing source of beauty and biodiversity. It is in fact a living natural history museum containing over 150 different species of grasses and wildflowers. The renowned botanist Dr Jim Willis was so excited when he saw the site in 1984 that he wrote to the Shire of Buller it carries the best example I've ever seen of an original grassland flora. Altogether, this is an astonishing wildflower area, unique in Victoria. I'm using the Murnong seed as the motif for my work. I've chosen this motif for a number of reasons. Firstly, to pay tribute to our First Nations people who cared for and lived sustainably on these lands for many thousands of years. Early records speak of the Murnong, or Yam Daisy, being widely cultivated in Sunbury by the Wurundjeri people. With colonial settlement and the introduction of sheep grazing, the Wurundjeri lost their lands, their livelihood, and many lost their lives. Now there is little evidence of the people who once lived here the grasslands are critically endangered and the Murnong has gone. Secondly, seeds are symbolic. A seed is the embodiment of the past, present and future. Stored within its DNA is the knowledge accumulated over millions of years for future generations to flourish. We associate seeds with regeneration and renewal, the cycle of life, and the source of ideas. The third reason is for the beauty and wonder they inspire. Daisies are humble everyday flowers, hardy and resilient, and they bring much joy. Remember as a child blowing a dandelion seed head and watching the seeds float away on the breeze? I wonder if Aboriginal children did the same with yam daisies. This is how I envisage the artwork and its place in the building. Visitors walk through the low entry space and the building unfolds into a two-storey volume. This is the place where visitors meet and mingle. It's illuminated from above by a large hexagonal skylight and can be viewed from many different vantage points. It's the perfect place for an art installation to activate the vertical space between sky and ground and create an uplifting communal and social experience. 
As people enter, their eyes are drawn upwards to a sea of floating Murnong seeds moving slowly overhead. Over 200 tiny parachutes hang gracefully and poetically in perfect balance. Suspended beneath the abstract, cloud-like form of the delicate mobile structure. Daylight streams down from the skylight, filtering through the cascade of delicate seeds, moving as if carried on a gentle breeze. The spotlights make them glisten and sparkle, sending tiny flickers of coloured light into the surrounding spaces. This floating scene draws us away from the attention-grabbing digital world and reconnects us with nature. It liberates the library from the traditional idea of stillness and infuses the communal space with peaceful energy. Microcerus scapagira, or plains yam daisy, is the local Murnong variety. Recently I managed to obtain some from the nursery at Siri. They were just flowering at the time, and since then I've watched them open and the seeds emerge. I've come to appreciate at close quarters the wonderful design of the seed heads and been enthralled by their delicate beauty. I've also taken many close-up photos, building a detailed knowledge of the individual seed parts and what gives them their unique identity. This is my latest maquette. It's a rough working prototype of one mobile at one quarter scale. It's about 75 centimetres across and about one metre high. In its final form in the Global Learning Centre, it will be about three metres wide and four metres high. The finished work will comprise seven of these mobiles suspended from the skylight. Each mobile is composed of 32 seeds, so there'll be around 224 seeds in total. Each one is suspended on a fine black wire. These wires hang from a delicate cloud-like form comprising a web of interconnected rods and pivots. Their slender arcs silhouette against the white and reddish brown walls. The slowly rotating copper seed heads will sparkle and shine in the glow from the spotlights, appearing to float in space as if carried on a breeze. Here I have a rough prototype of one of the seed heads at full size. I've tried to replicate the qualities of the Murnong seeds while simplifying the detail. The pappus, the top parachute part, will be made from enamelled copper wire to ensure that the reflective surface retains its natural sparkle and colour. There are approximately 50 strands that make up the pappus, which is about 25 centimetres across. I created a sculpture in clay of the sipsella, or seed part, at a greatly enlarged scale. Kaber then laser scanned my model and 3D printed some pods at roughly the final size. For the final artwork, we hope to print them in an eco-friendly material, a mixture of recycled wood and bioplastic made from corn, making it a renewable and 100% compostable component. I see this project as an opportunity to ignite passion for the Evans Street grasslands in the hearts of our community. Currently, the grasslands are isolated, Science tells us that with fragmentation, loss of biodiversity and fertility will follow. As a small isolated plot, it is also highly vulnerable to weed invasion and climate change. Creating a nature corridor along the railway line will connect the grasslands to the planned regional park, allowing regeneration of plants and soil and the return of fauna, vital to their long-term viability. I imagine a future where native plants and animals flourish once more in a healthy grassland, where Murnong grows again and its seeds are free to float on the wind from Sunbury to the organ pipes and beyond. As you may be able to tell, I'm passionately engaged with this project and would love to see it through to fruition.